I'm gonna present a paper that's more theory based on and that tries to find the underlying sources of discrimination. So let me actually start with evidence from two different papers. So on the one hand, there's this paper here on the left that showed that in STEM fields, female students face quite heavy discrimination if they apply for just a small job where they have to do some mathematical task. Then a year later, there's this other paper here in green that showed that among accomplished researchers, also in STEM fields, when they apply for professorships, actually women are favored over their male peers. So we have these two pieces of evidence that seem kind of contradictory. On the one hand, there seems to be discrimination against women. On the other hand, women are even favored over men. So what's going on here? How can we explain this? Is it just that discrimination is situation dependent or what is happening? And that's where this paper here comes in because they argue that you can explain this with what they call dynamic discrimination. First of all, they note, which is probably good news, that you can't explain it with what is called taste-based discrimination. So you can't explain it with just a general dislike of women or a general dislike of interacting with women and so on. So their explanation is based on, um, like just say in the setting with the students here for now. So for example, we have students that have a grade and they are evaluated by their teachers. So the teachers need to, mm, I don't know, write a letter of recommendation to go to a summer school or something like that. They know the grade is not a perfect signal of the student's actual ability, so, but that's the only thing they have. Now suppose, and this is important, that there's two types of teachers. One that have a bias, so they just think that in general, women have lower abilities than men. On the other hand, there's the unbiased ones, which believe that women and men have the same abilities. Now, if a biased teacher evaluates a student, two students with the same grades, he will ev evaluate the woman lower than the men. Thus, initially, we have women being evaluated lower than men. However, then some students go to that summer school, they acquire some reputation, they proceed in their careers, and they acquire more reputation and so on. And so eventually they will apply for a professorship. And then they need to be evaluated again. There's again going to be either biased or unbiased evaluators. Suppose now it's an unbiased evaluator. The unbiased evaluator now has faces a man and a woman that have exactly the same reputation. So if they look at the woman, they know, however, that the woman probably faced some biased ones that evaluated her in the past. So he knows that she had to work harder to reach exactly the same level of reputation. And thus, the unbiased evaluator will actually favor the woman over the man because he concludes that she might have higher abilities than the men. However, they're still the biased ones, but the biased ones now rely mostly on reputation, and the reputation is now an average between biased and unbiased evaluators. So there, uh, the gap between how he evaluates men and women will now shrink as well for the biased evaluator. So overall, we can end up in a setting like this uh, other paper in green before showed, where women become favored over men. And they then test this in an experiment where they, um, they look at these online Q&A forums where you can ask questions and answer questions. And uh, it's a <coughs> mass forum. And they create new accounts in this forum. Half of them have female usernames, half have male usernames. Then, because each um, user can be rated by other users, so if you post a question, if you answer a question, you get a rating like that adds to your reputation and everyone can see your reputation. So what they do is they leave half of these new accounts, they leave them as new accounts without any questions posted yet. So they don't have any reputation. The other half, they, they work on them, they post questions, they answer questions and so on, so that they acquire a certain level, a quite high level of reputation actually. Then they come up with a set of questions about math that they randomly assign to these accounts so that they make sure that the level of difficulty shouldn't impact the results. Then they look what happens if these accounts then post these questions. And they actually find exactly this. So they find that the new accounts, the accounts where um, there's no prior questions, there's no reputation whatsoever, among those questions posted there by female accounts, the rating of these questions were much lower than the ratings of questions posted by male accounts. But if they take the advanced accounts that have a quite high level of reputation, the pattern reverses and actually the questions posted by the female usernames get much higher ratings than the male usernames. So they show that actually these two 
types of situations that seem to either show that there is discrimination or there isn't can actually be explained by exactly the same kind of discrimination just over time. So they show that this over time setting might be important if we want to understand what's really going on.